Hello, welcome. My name is Portia. I'm part of the community team of IPFS, and this is our IPFS all hands on meeting. The purpose of this meeting is for us to see what the community is creating and what they are doing um, with IPFS uh, technologies. Give me one moment. Okay, sorry about that. And we will begin today's presentation with um, Nicholas Pace. He is going to talk about hearing communities from the grassroots. Um, so he's going to talk about his grassroots work with us. And um, Nicholas, are you Nicholas? Are you there? Yes. Yes. Hi. All right. All right. I'll let you take it from here. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Portia, and hi to everyone. Uh, I will share my screen so you can see what I'm seeing, and I will start from there. Okay, so, um, hi, everyone. Um, good to be here. Uh, thank you, Portia, for facilitating this space. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, I will be talking about this, uh, uh, this initiative that we started uh, with Protocol Laos for the last uh, three months that is in relation to getting a more uh, awareness on the developer community in relation to uh, what are the needs from the grassroots, what are the needs from the most uh, um, unconnected, most remote, most unfair places in our planet. Uh, in relation and what technology can do to support this process. Uh, so, uh, where am I? So, this is what I'm going to share as fast as I can because we have 10 minutes. Uh, so, where do I come from? Uh, this is uh, my organization is called Alter Mundi, the organization that I belong to. Uh, we are a grassroots that work on peer to peer approaches, peer, human technologies that use technology like digital technologies as a helper. Uh, so a peer-to-peer uh, -peer approach to people's primary needs. Like in this case, uh, we work on telecommunications uh, as a means for com communities to organize each other and achieve the needs that they have. Uh, doing that, we worked in these two other projects, Libre Mesh and Libre Router, that help the communities uh, to be able to create their own infrastructure without having to have much technical knowledge. So trying to be geek-free infrastructure or infrastructure that can be appropriated. Um, so uh, and th these are community, these are these community, these uh, groups are called community networks. So a community network is a group of people that choose to create their own telecommunications infrastructure. And that means that they maintain, manage, grow, and govern their infrastructure as a collective or through their representatives. But that also mean, that, that means basically that there's no Verizon or, or any provider there, but they are the ones that provide themselves with their infrastructure. And this is where I come to talk to you about uh, the, the problems of the community. So these are some of the communities that have been working on this. We can see here communities from Argentina, but also from Mexico, South Africa, all over the place. Um, uh, and what's the particulars of this group of people? So these are the three billion that are unconnected right now. Uh, it's a big problem, uh, but it's, wherever there's no connection, the, the, it means that also there are, no, the, there are a lot of other things that are not there. Like the, when there's no connection, it means that probably there's no electricity or there's no proper healthcare or there's no education, like formal education or there's no, uh, I don't know, like uh, proper housing. Uh, b basic things that you would experience, expect in your communities are not there. And also the means that they have been, uh, the, the world has been using to approach to these problems has have not been able to address Hey, Nicolas. Uh, thank you. There we go. We just yeah. started seeing your, your screen share. Oh, you have not been listening. 
hear me? Um, no, we, we've been hearing you, but it was a black screen. Oh, that's so sad. Okay. Anyway, uh, do you he do you see the three billion title now? Yes, we do. Oh, okay. Uh, I will share the slides later to you, so don't worry about the slides much. Um, but okay, good that you have been following the audio. <laughs> um, so. The, the, the current situation is that the current solutions have, are not dealing, being able to deal with the problem, not, not with the water, not the, with the health, and neither with the connectivity. So the, and, and, and this happens basically because the problem is too diverse and too complex to be addressed in a top-down uh, top approach. Um, the, uh, and because of this, the communities are starting to take the matter in their own hands and dealing with the problem by themselves. But one of the risks, uh, the, so connectivity comes with a lot of uh, complications and uh, we are usually not very aware of what good, so we are usually, we are used to technology in a positive way like technology always brings the good things to life or or helps us achieve good things in life but we never talk about the possibility or we are not used to talk about the possibilities that it also creates for bad things to happen uh, in particular there's there's a link there that talks about uh, addiction and uh, uh, bullying and a lot of things that happen in the Western world, but also this, uh, 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 the, if you see the photo at your left, or if you go to this uh, slide when you receive them, uh, this guy uh, was giving a testimony of what happened with previous technologies that arrived to this community. This is Guadalupe Cotán in Mexico. This is a Wirrarica community, and this guy was telling us uh, that around 60 years ago, his grandmother told him that uh, they, they were told that schools were arriving to their community. And they were told that schools were good, but uh, who, what other things might be coming to their community through schools? And uh, schools finally arrived. And through schools, they lost the capacity to transfer their traditional knowledge from father to uh, child because they were the, the, the traditional way of transferring this knowledge was through uh, sharing time during the day and because the traditional education model was removed replaced by this um, um, uh, scholarized schools uh, it meant that they lacked they, they lacked the ability to transfer their traditional knowledge it doesn't mean that they were not able to find a different one, but it, their culture reproduction, their culture growth was in risk by this. Then they, say, they said the roads were coming, and through the roads, good things would happen to their community. Uh, but they were never told that when roads arrived, uh, were going, going to arrive, uh, it, it could mean for them bad things. And bad things happened also, because through roads, came Coca-Cola, and through Coca-Cola, they started having diabetes, for example. I mean, and and in, in all their history, they never had diabetes or any other problem like that, uh, and obesity, for example, and now they have diabetes and obesity. So it's also important to consider the potential risks of what internet could bring. Also in Azacualpa, Honduras, and these are places that I have been working with, uh, in Azacualpa, Honduras, uh, we have been working with this, uh, with this community. And uh, in, this, in this case, I want to share in particular one, one part of the exercise that was, we did an exercise with them to uh, figure out what are the things that we remember the most when we talk about our community. So we did a, a map like a, a, a collective uh, drawing with all the things that we cherish about our community when we go abroad. Like, let's say if we have to go to the nearby uh, city to, do, to go to the market, what do we remember about our community? What are the characteristics of our community? 
So like the people draw the, the river and the air crops and the family and the radio and the trees and a lot of a lot of things, right? And then uh, we said, okay, so these are the things that can be boosted by internet or by the technologies that we might set up. And what what are the bad things that can be boosted or that that can also uh, grow with the with the uh, with through bringing technology to our community and the interesting thing was that uh, at least in that moment the community was not able to discuss with each other or to bring to the conversation the bad things that were already within the community and they that they might also uh, uh, that they, they that might be also encouraged through the through technology and that's a second point that i feel that is important to acknowledge that it's much easier to see the good things in things than the bad things. And that means that we need to be much more careful about what are the implications of the technologies that we uh, share with the world and that we build uh, and that we put at the service of the community. Because the bad things are much difficult to find, to, to, to acknowledge than the good things. So I have been bringing this question uh, with me for the last uh, three months with the help of Protocol Labs. And I have been traveling around, uh, so I, I, I have been in South Africa, in Canada, and in India for the last three months. And I have brought this question with me uh, to help us as a collective of technologists that are worried about the current state of the world uh, uh, to steer our energy to the most concern, concerning, most relevant parts of the, the problematic. And um, I, I have two videos that I want to share with you, uh, but there will be more coming and uh, I will share them through the discourse platform of uh, IPFS, so we can discuss about them. The first one is uh, this one, so I will go. Uh, I, uh, let me know if the audio work, okay? Okay. No. Yeah, the, the audio is not working. Um, oh, yeah. Um, I don't hear, we don't hear the sound? Okay. Uh, is there anything? Uh, uh, uh. Give me one second. There must be thing in relation to how I share the audio, but apparently I can share the audio. Yeah, you would not enjoy me sharing the output of the microphone, like looping to. Uh, huh. How do we do this? Um. Can you put the link of the video in the chat or in the notes so that we can all watch it on our own time and, um, you know, it's a good idea. Yeah. Apparently when you share um, the screen, there's a checkbox at the bottom, which says share computer sound. Oh, okay. So you Hold to, on. You might have so to stop sharing, sharing and then start sharing again. Okay. Thank you for the guidance. Uh, I don't have that check. That's sad. I'm using Linux, so sometimes these things are not the same in every platform. Yeah, on Mac, you see it when you select the window you want to share. So if you click on the share icon, then you get a set of windows. Uh, let's do and that then at the thing. bottom, you'll let's see share. the checkbox. The screen. OK, let me know if you hear now. Oh, is it Jason? Do you hear? Yeah. Yes. Oh, awesome. Then we'll return. Yes. Let's start again. Um, well, most of the high pay community is of Cape Town and design. And Santa is actually a farming community. It services the rest of, of the Wow Oak communities, but so because of the people of poverty that many do not escape from. 
and we started an organization called uh, Waumbe Youth Development. Waumbe means empower them. So we started it because we realized that the value and the love portion was from that the place and what lies with the Santa Club community. And one of the problems that kept on surf was well, it's far. It's so far for us to go and we to pay to go and far for us to look can we just do the links for this? Because I think it's yeah. coming out a lot for everybody and nobody can yeah. what's going on. Yeah, Nico, we, we can't follow what she's saying. It's too choppy. We should just let, let if you could just describe oh, okay. what's in the video and we can watch it later. No, of course, yes. Uh, and thank you for letting me. So basically, uh, Mauritia is, uh, so both Mauritia and Lillian, that is the next one in the video, uh, they are basically uh, sharing the limitations of being in a uh, in a far away place, uh, both in terms of uh, location. But I mean, the location aware they are far away from where the resources are, but also the access and the so the, the territory is difficult to 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 walk, but also the the access to the means for them to actually achieve anything in relation to the digital age uh, are not there and 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 the most concerning part and okay you're not being able to see my screen now so again I will do the sharing and again sharing my uh, the the okay um so in relation to Mauritius, uh, the the context is is is, um, is terrifying because it's the contrast is so violent. This community, the the, the poorest members of the, com the the society are the the most disadvantaged members of the society live exactly next to the most wealthy people, and those that live in 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 the poorest uh, area. Uh, are in, in a uh, are lacking the basic the basic capacity to access uh, res digital resources and uh, uh, there, there, there is no literacy. So uh, she she's sharing the the um, the lack of heart, let's say, in the in the current status of society, uh, at least in that community. And Lillian uh, shares the possibilities. Uh, so wh where she comes from, she's from, uh, I am mixing Ghana and the other place. Uh, anyway, I will let you, I will share with you the locations too. Um, what she was sharing is for her that she had the chance to look for a job online, for example, the life was completely different than her, her pairs within her own family even. Uh, that the, the possibilities that internet brings and the, and the technology brings to um, communities that are far away. Hello? Yes. Hey, sorry. Um, yes. Nico, you have, we're about to end soon, so you have like two minutes left. Yes. And then two we'll slides. do Q&A. I have, two. okay, awesome, thank you. And I'll do Q&A, uh, thank you so much. So yeah. the possibility, the possibilities that um, that technology can bring to these places are uh, life changing. Um, so I have been searching already on and uh, that a little bit more about what I, these are more testimonial in a way, like this is what I have witnessed and what I have seen through my eyes and I will share with you the two links too. I will keep producing videos, but also interviews, I feel that they are much stronger than what I can share because they come directly from the people that uh, are living those experiences. And actually, I would like to engage with you with an, through an, 
to, to have an open conversation about these topics and be able to create bridges that allow the people from the communities be able to talk to you in relation to the problems that they have, how technology can help them, and how you, what, what things interest you or excite you or uh, move you to think of on problems of these communities, and if you have any question in relation to these communities. Uh, so, uh, and so this has this have, has been the, the the places that I have been during last year, and these are the places that will probably be during next year. Uh, so also, it's going to be interesting what things we can discuss about uh, the, uh, about these these particular places. Not only in the most uh, uh, let's say poor countries, economy wise, but also. Even in the richest countries, in the United States, in Canada, these things also happen. In Europe, you see disadvantages like this. So uh, I think that these are uh, these discussions that are extremely interesting to discuss. And I'm eager to hear about your questions and bring awesome. them. Awesome. Uh, and also because the project, yeah. I, it's the, awesome. So we go. um, uh, we're going to, um, because, I hate to cut yeah. you off. We're going to begin so, questions no, no, right no. now. If if you can put the link of your presentation in a chat, then we can all look at it. Um, I'm glad that you have the contact slide so we have any questions that we can't get to that we can contact you directly. Um, so this is a Q&A and I actually have the first question. I would like to know what are, what is the key lesson that the IPFS community should take away when we are building tools and when we're building um, a distributed network, like what, what should we think of and what should we remember when we're building these tools? Uh, okay, I will piggyback on the conversation that we had a few minutes before the, to the, the talk. I think uh, it's in uh, the, the key question that we, we need to stop thinking about answers to questions that no one has asked themselves and start hearing more about the questions that come from the community. Uh, I think that's key, and, it, uh, and it's a very powerful model too, because these three billion people, or at least uh, the subgroup that wants to be connected, they will need the technology that, that the IPFS community is developing, but only if it deals with the problems that they need to be dealt with. So it needs to be application-based and not platform-based. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, going to move on to the next question. Uh, Molly, did I see your hand? Molly? Yeah. Do you have a question? Um, yes. Thank so you. my question is based on the, the slide you showed at the end, um, which shows kind of the, the delta between your 2018 research areas and your 2019 research areas. And something I'm really curious about is um, given that you, you were looking between South America and India a little bit, and next year you'll have some South America versus Indonesia comparison points. Um, kind of what, what have you noticed so far between these kind of different areas of the world and things like technology adoption rates, um, use of more peer-to-peer community-oriented solutions versus kind of out-of-the-box centrally, but, but maybe um, slower centralized solutions um, given, given your internet access? Like, do you have any high level takeaways between these different regions or uh, is it very, uh, is the variance much more on an individual community basis than it is uh, in big swaths of the world? Uh, it's a good question, Molly. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, actually, the, so the, the difference between, the, so the, the gap, so the problem is quite similar but the take the the approaches can be different. So, for example, you have in Mexico communities that have created in Mexico and in Philippines, for example, you have communities that have created uh, offline GSM networks for themselves. So they they run their own mobile operators, and they that allows them to talk to each other and even sometimes talk talk to. Uh, the world, the rest of the world, uh, through voice over IP, and um, we are also talking about. So, the needs of the communities are usually based on. You have two groups, let's say. So those that are, that want to to have access to the internet, and those that ask directly about about the internet, 
I would say, okay, let's let's dig deeper in that in that question because there might be more things to talk about before getting internet here. And then you have people that want to do something with the internet. And, so, and that th something is usually better when it's offline or it's local. Uh, in the sense that the problem is already local. Uh, they usually don't need, uh, they don't expect to be uh, in, a, in any way uh, uh, solving a problem that is global in nature. The, the problems are usually local in nature and you may deal with them globally or not. Uh, the use of peer-to-peer -peer technologies is probably non-existent for now. Uh, what you might see is federated systems like mail or uh, voice over IP sometimes, but really, really scarce. Uh, what I have been seeing basically is access to the internet and going straight forward to the mainstream services. And that's actually one of my, our biggest concerns. What happens when you connect a community to the internet? What happens with their culture? What happens with their autonomy? What happens with their governing structures when they are digitalized? So yeah, I think, and, and there's a lot, of, a, a lot to talk about in that area, Molly. So I'm eager to discuss about, uh, more about that topic. Thank you very much. Um, there are one more question. We have time for one more quick question. Okay. Thank you. I could, so I could much. throw in Nick. Oh, oh okay. Uh, this, this is Matt. Uh, Matt. So, Nico, I, I know this is reflected in one of your videos, which I recommend everyone should watch the videos you're producing. But maybe say a little bit about the connection between uh, Wi Fi community networks, community Wi Fi networks, and how that's connected with. The, in order for these technologies to be really useful for these communities, we, w how much do we also need that physical infrastructure of connectivity? And so there was this example of, uh, in one of your videos, you talk about people have to pay really, really high prices for data connectivity on their phones. Meanwhile, they have a local radio and television that's produced locally. And if they had a means to just distribute it locally, physically, then you could maybe connect to it using something like IPFS without any sort of centralized system. So what do you, what do you see as the balance there? Do we need both in order for any of this to be viable or can we do it piecemeal? Uh, thanks, Matt, for the question. It's already also a very useful question. Uh, so in this community in particular, La and uh, this is the first video I produced, uh, they wanted to have a local TV station that allowed them both, the community to connect with each other, but also for expats, from people from abroad that, have, that are part of their community to be able to follow the communal events that are, were streamed through the TV station. Uh, for now, they are using Facebook Live as a means, but look, having a local infrastructure could mean for them to both be able to distribute the content locally and to use the spare bandwidth uh, much more effectively. Um, and I think that infrastructure needs to become more local and much more local sensitive. Uh, right now, the way infrastructure is run is basically a, a high speed, uh, 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 highway direct to the data centers of the mainstream services. And that means that in general, despite we would like the, globe, the, the world to be more peer-to-peer, -peer, it, 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 the infrastructure even reveals that it's quite difficult for now. So I think we need to work harder on uh, uh, enabling the communities and encouraging the communities to create their own infrastructure that serves the local uh, the local needs uh, and, in, and in that scenario I believe that the peer-to-peer -peer technologies will be the peer-to-peer -peer and the federated but because it's peer-to-peer -peer at a different layer let's say um, I believe that they can be of a, of a great service for the communities that uh, are uh, in this situation and even so uh, I, 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 I think that uh, this will be the use cases that will uh, that will trigger global global use of the of the peer-to-peer -peer technologies because these are places that are that really really need and will get the most out of the peer-to-peer -peer technologies uh, where the bandwidth uh, the local bandwidth is 300 megabits but the bandwidth to the internet is half a megabit 
So it makes total sense to use peer-to-peer -peer technology. Um, um, yeah. I, Nico, I hate to interrupt. No, no. We are um, at six, we are, the IPFS meeting, we've already done 30 minutes. We're, um, we're finished, but we are going to go over about two or three minutes. I'm going to have to end this he, uh, here and I will leave a minute or two for announcements. Nico, thank you very much for sharing your research with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, in terms of announcements, um, the, J, the JS IPF team, they um, have a new release as of Friday, a brand new web UI, and they also have a feature where you can check out the data structure IPLD underneath IPFS, so that's really exciting, and I'll have a link below. Um, and if you're interested in more news and more developments of the IPFS community, you can check out our newsletter, and I will also leave a link below for the newsletter. Thank you very much, and we will see you next Monday. Um, Portia, I believe there's also yeah. an announcement from David. Um, I don't okay. know if he jumped off to the, um, I don't see him here. So maybe he jumped off to the JSIPFS meeting, um, but his his announcement that he added to the keynotes was a humble oh, call. Oh, he's here! For hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, thank you. Hey. Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, thank you, thank you. I, I think you were uh, exactly in the right direction. So a uh, humble call to all the performance hackers. Uh, I do want to write some form of blog post to announce this more properly, but like we have been discussing a lot about performance improvements, performance improvements, and so one of the things that kind of like got uh, redone this week, which is like an improvement on the uh, interoperability tests that we have for IP tests. But it turns out that our interoperability tests are actually great benchmarks because they run go with go, go with JS, sending files that way, JS to go, sending files that way, and JS to JS. And so you can compare uh, the, the four uh, streams and, and like running the tests, and like the tests are designed in a way that it's very simple for you to change the size of the file or how nested a directory is. Um, and like you can play with charting, not charting, etc. So it's very easy. It's like basically commenting and commenting in some lines. Uh, it should be simple for everyone, even if you don't know JavaScript. Um, the remit describes how to run a test, is NPM install and NPM tests. Uh, and you can see JavaScript uh, today is a little bit like slower than Go, like uh, it's a one fourth of the speed. Um, and so there's a lot of room to improve, but also it gives, um, some uh, information to the Go people and how performance the, their implementation is when someone is using a client library, right? Because this is using just a PFS API to talk with the Go implementation. Um, one thing that is interesting, uh, like I, I thought about like running the tests here if we had time, we clearly don't have time, but I would also not run it because when I run these tests, I kill any router that is next to me. Uh, and so transferring one gigabyte to 10 gigabytes uh, will literally DOS any router that you're connected uh, because of like all the DHT providers. So for the people that are doing providers improvement, this might also be like a good test factor for you. Um, just make sure that like there is some strategy that users could use uh, to to like do this exchange from one node to another node of a 10 gigabyte file without uh, uh, DOSing your connect connection. So yeah, this is it. It's a small update. Uh, I hope to be able to write a blog post so that we can call oh, all the yeah. performance hackers in the world. Uh, that's it. Yay. <laughs> uh, and, <right> now. <laughs> and before we leave, Go also has a new release tool. I'll also put the link below. And um, once again, thank you. And see you next Monday. Bye.